Good morning and welcome back to Poor Pang Farm Thailand and today is our latest project which is, what could we nickname it? Uh, Stop the Naughty Goats Escaping. Uh, there's a lot of fencing to do. Toon and I have done uh, two complete sides at the moment uh, but we've run out of steam and this is the longest full length that we need to do so we've been very lucky that uh, our main building man Nalurd, uh, Nalur and his son are here to help for a day. His son is down there taking the old fence down uh, when then putting it over to the correct side of the post which is the inside so when the goats scratch themselves and rub against it it doesn't put pressure on the wire uh, and then we will have a line of barbed wire running along the top so we've got these little supports here uh, this is what Toon and I have done all, all down the other side since we've done it we've not had a single escape uh, and yet here you let them out and uh, it's a goat tsunami straight over the side very very sweaty work uh, but doing all right we've just done about 50 meters so far uh, we've got loads of timber cut down from uh, surplus surplus trees that aren't sort of like really good quality on the on the farm so it's good to get a use out of those uh, we're just going to nip back have a bite to eat let the goats out uh, off the farm bring them back and then we'll be out helping the guys again it's going well two lads have just gone back to their house to grab some lunch so i'm gonna have a walk down here see how they've been getting on Toon's not here at the moment, she's had to go into town, get a few more bits and bobs for the fence. Uh, got an errand to run for her mum, so yeah, it's unfortunate she's going to be a little while. Uh, I've been keeping an eye on the herd and did a minor repair on the fence. Uh, got it in the neck. Well, me and you got it in the neck, Chris. Chris is the guy who came and did a two-week farm stay with us recently. And uh, yeah, we didn't put some wire around a bit of a post. And of course, the goats find that eventually. They test all the fencing after you've uh, in, installed it or, or tweaked it, looking for weak points. So that's sorted now. Uh, I blamed you, Chris. Sorry, mate. Whoa, that is red hot. Red hot. Barely a cloud in the sky. Look how brown everything's gone so quickly. So they had corn in here a few months ago. We still put the goats in here now and again. A slim pickings. But as we get further and further down, as the, uh, we get to the low point of the land round here, you can see it's still greener. You can see these are the, the last bits to, to dry out. Got all the fence to do along here, but that's not the most important bit. That will all be raised up the same as what we're doing at the moment. Me and Toon don't mind doing this work. It's just that it's such a big job. Uh, when we did the other sides, we were only doing about 30 meters a day because you were taking the old fence down, putting it over the other side of the posts, tying that up and putting little posts up high enough to get the barbed wire on and then tying that. So it was a quite, quite a laborious job. So we're going to take it up to the fence pond here because we've got a, excuse the coffee, we've got a, uh, the gate behind there. State of this road, old cat face has been scraping it to his heart's content. We don't care now. Nothing to do with us outside of our official boundary. Some of you have asked about the boundary dispute. Uh, this side is has been sorted now. So the guy who owns this land, he came down with his little target laser thing and we put a line all the way down here and we'd encroached a little bit up there where Toonstad had put some trees in a long, long time ago. This was about right along here and then the far end, Catface had indeed been cutting into our land. So I think we've broken even along this bit. Uh, over the back, we haven't put um, a fence across. We've just fenced across where Toon's mum is in charge of the last 10 rye. So no issues there. And at the back of that, we've got the posts in. Uh, the front of the property, which is back that way, not a problem because that's the government road. And over the far side over there, that was the main issue really. And the husband and wife that we, had, we were having the dispute with 
that they've since passed away. Nothing to do with us guys. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened there, but they're both gone. And they're re the, the government are renewing the road down there. So we were advised um, by certain people in the know and in a certain position to uh, stick your posts right, well, slightly into the old road. And then when the new road comes, it will get pushed back over the other side. So that's good. Whether we've lost a bit over there, I don't know. Maybe a tiny bit, um, maybe not. But the, the beauty of it is we've got all the place fenced in now. We've got a proper boundary and uh, we can relax. Uh, Any time a tractor goes past, um, we're not having kittens thinking that they're cutting into our land. So it's, it's, it's lovely now. So they've been cutting the tall grass back here. That's been one of the problems. You get tall grass growing on this side and the goats can see all this and they want a bit of it. So they were jumping over and helping themselves. Yeah, we're not going to get it done today. Not quite halfway. I think we're about a third. Plus barbed wire. As we get further and further up here, we'll be able to keep an eye on the goats. We can get the goats back in here because there's lots of fodder in here, but where they are at the moment, there's not a lot. And that's why they're trying to get out. They are hungry. So you can, if you put them in here at the moment on this parcel of land, they're full within about three hours. The other side, they're, they're eating all day to get full. Never had a goat squeeze underneath. So we've raised it up an extra couple of inches. A big thank you to uh, several of you that are on Patreon. You've helped for getting the boys in today. It, uh, we also use some of the Patreon funds to buy the, the wire. Uh, our, uh, our late friend Jim, bless his cotton socks, uh, he, he, uh, he paid for nearly all the posts on the farm. So uh, without your help, this just wouldn't have happened. It's, it has transformed uh, our livestock farming uh, beyond recognition. You know, it wasn't that long ago that I was free ranging with goats, you know, and trying to keep them off all this land behind me. Well, all round and as enjoyable it was, it did get a little bit fraught at times. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a real, real challenge. Now I, I couldn't do it anyway. Not that I'm uh, a little bit older and a bit more fatigued, which, which is the case of course, but um, we just got a head of goats now where you can't you can't keep them all under control whereas before when I was free ranging I think I think I got up to about 20 odd and it was just about okay but now the pasture um, has, has recovered you know from when we first got here it's it's really blossoming now although it looks like a jungle to you um, the goats can't always see each other and they get split up and once they get split up I can't control them all not even with my uh, professional naughty stick now when they rub against the fence you know it, it can't put pressure on on this which was which was the main problem then that would go loose then they would put the hooves on here to try and get the grass on the other side and as soon as they put the weight on it was slipping down then they got their head over and that's it they were uh, noshing on all the other farms fodder which of course is bad enough <laughs> On, it, on its own uh, but sometimes if it's uh, fresh cassava uh, then there's there's cyanide in fresh cassava leaves I know I know a lot of livestock farmers use cassava skins for feed but they ferment them first they they put them into barrels and sweat them for I don't know I think it's about four or five days um, same with the actual cassava tubers you can feed them to the to the goats but you need to fully dry them slice them very thin super dry them that's what we've done in the past and they love them can't give them too much though because it does rip through them like a porsche but yeah sometimes we give them give them that as a bit of a treat round the back end coming up here rather than use posts all the way along it was always the plan to utilize our last line of eucalyptus as like a living post so we've just tagged them with nails. They're not particularly long nails. The, the growth of the trees certainly doesn't seem to be uh, compromised by doing that. We planted our eucalyptus, uh, I think it was three metres apart. Is it two or three metres? Maybe two and a half metres. 
I think it was two meters and then the rows were three meters apart. So yes, yeah, it's uh, nice and tight. And so we haven't, we haven't got a, we haven't had a goat get out of here. If we'd have known in advance exactly where the boundary was, we could have come inside say 12 inches because these grow quite big. So, you know, if we'd have, you know, if you, if you thought that was going to be the, the boundary, then come inside and as they grow, you're not going to lose too much land. And then we should, could have put the, the fencing on there. But when we, when we grew all these eucalyptus, we didn't really know what we were doing. We certainly didn't know that we were going to end up as goat farmers. So uh, yeah, it's been posts, which aren't particularly cheap. The posts are three meters apart. Uh, they're all concreted in on the boundary, all internal uh, posts aren't. So we can move them around as we see fit. If I remember rightly, it was getting on for 300 posts. Would have been a lot more if we couldn't have used the eucalyptus here and we nailed, we elected to nail on the government trees at the front of the property. So we didn't need many posts there at all. Uh, it could have been a, so it could have been a lot, lot worse, but all the holes were dug by hand. Now I, I did use some patron money to buy a post hole driller fantastic idea Lee. Only thing is uh, Paul Pang Farm is situated on almost solid rock so once you've got through about five inches of topsoil um, it just basically rips the arms out your shoulder sockets. Incredibly dangerous so I thought it was me being a lightweight the lads had a go and uh, that flew that flew across the, uh, the farm when they had a go and so they were like sod that we'll, uh, we'll dig them by hand. Uh, there you go. At least it wasn't in the middle of the dry season, otherwise it would have been even harder. Probably the biggest project we've we've ever undertaken on the farm, uh, apart from digging a lake. Water level on the lake's dropping nicely now. We have started uh, pumping out water to irrigate the, the bamboo and the palms. Thought we'd just take advantage of the high level of water in the in the lake. Uh, and you know we still need more water out so it just makes sense now everywhere's drying out to to utilize some of that water otherwise it will just evaporate and go to waste all the fish are growing immensely well very happy with that goats we're going to do a separate update on the goats separate update on the snake head uh, alligator gar I don't know they just they just scare me maybe maybe we'll do a we're not due a tank clean, the, the water's very, very clean in there. So I don't know, that might be a little bit later. Um, as for crayfish updates, they're sluggish as hell because it's still quite cool in the evenings. Yes, it is cool in the evenings. Well, start of day two. Well, that's not really fair, it's not totally accurate. The boys have been working for about an hour. Two nuts to nip into town, get the barbed wire. She couldn't find any yesterday, so she had to go a bit further afield. Just come back with five rolls of that and we're going to continue our barbed wiring so we did this some months back on the old eucalyptus uh, we've got a bit of a roll down there probably about another 20 meters and uh, yeah that's uh, well it'll keep us out of trouble and mischief I suppose as far as the fencing goes the boys did outstandingly well yesterday I think they're about 60% of the way down there uh, but but really it's it's going to be quicker today because most of the woods already cut for the for the post these sort of like extension posts for the for the barbed wire to be tagged onto yet another day without a single cloud in the sky I'm not over exaggerating when I say yesterday was rated in our top two of all time hardest days work. The only other one being when we planted almost 3000 eucalyptus in here over two and a half days uh, with help from two other people. Uh, we were absolutely battered last night. I couldn't lift my arms up. Uh, mind you, it's, it's not just the hard work, it's, it's from uh, years of being on the ropes with my old job. So uh, my old tendons aren't what they used to be. and. Uh, if I don't have enough sort of like respite in between, then uh, struggle to lift my hands up at the end of the day. And that was the case last night. My back was shot to pieces. But uh, 
Toon being Toon, she's a good wife, and uh, gave me a bit of a rub down with a tiger balm. Anything is using tiger balm, there's no happy ending afterwards, but hey ho, can't have it all, can we? Cheers. I'm just wondering why you're dressed for the uh, Antarctic. Then I not get cut from the weed, from the wire. Same yesterday, I think I done enough for that. Nearly lost your thumb yesterday, didn't you? Let's have a look. I didn't look to it, I'm not going to touch it. You were screaming yesterday, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. This was basically a hinge and her thumb was dangling down that way. Terrible you. <laughs> Are you looking forward to this job, missus? I have to, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, what we I think we pitched to... enough for the goat. We have to do <laughs> yeah. evil. We don't want to, but yeah. we have to. Super moody with the goats yesterday. So uh, we've got to get this sorted. Anyway, what have we promised ourselves for the next couple of days after this? After the job's done? I'm going to be cabbage. Cabbage. Stay, you... do nothing. Just breathing. Just breathing. And L drinking. A little bit of fishing, maybe? Not me. No? Oh, proper vegetable then? Yeah, not do anything at all. Real rest. All right, I'll catch dinner, no problem. Yeah. You cut the fish, you cook the fish. I eat it. Part roll done. Time to let the goats out and then start again. No, I? No, I? No, I do. Morning of day three. Yeah, day three. We're almost done, but not quite. Uh, the bad news is Nella and his stepson have left us. So it's yours truly and Mrs. Crabtree got to finish this. But the good news is all the barbed wire's done, all the fence is done, all the posts are in. All we need to do is, well, I say all, just do about another 100, 150 metres of uh, securing the thing with wires and I'll show you what I mean. So when a goat comes up, cunning as they are, they put the hooves on here, knowing full well that this will bend down under their weight. You imagine someone like Bullseye or Sam, you know, they're well over 60 kg. Uh, and they'll create a gap between here and here. So to just zigzag some wire like this. So when they pull that down, the barbed wire comes down. They sniff it, get a little prick on the nose and uh, give up. If you don't do that, then they'll go around squashing the fence. They'll just go around testing the fence, see where they can squash it down. And then they have an uncanny knack of remembering where their weak point is. Uh, and then they just all jump through there. So, uh, not allowed. The idea is get this finished this morning. All this is still super wet from the dew last night. This is a daily occurrence now <coughs> with the weather we've got. Uh, and then by about 10 o'clock, it's pretty much bone dry apart from the real thick stuff. And we can let them out. We usually let them out for about an hour on the island Put some dry grass there. Uh, it's, it's this grass that they make the uh, the dry dry grass roofs with. Just put a big bucket of that out. They're, they're not happy with it. They don't particularly like it. Uh, but if they're hungry, they'll eat it. By the time they've had that and uh, fed the kids, then we let them out. Right. Not really looking forward to this, but we did say last night the final push. So I'll be cutting the wire and Toon will be doing her magic, twisting it around the fence. Oh, she's not happy. We've got more to do than she remembered. All right, let's get on it. Oh, yeah. oh. Happy May. Good morning, everybody. Light farming, didn't we, eh? Boom, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> What's more boring, though? Doing this or chasing the goats when they get out? Chased goat. Yeah. Well, we're flying now. All these centre posts are now secured, thanks to yours truly. Uh, Toon's doing the zigzag wires. I just started helping her, did a few of them. Uh, but the goats need to be let out now. So we're going to let them out on the island. I need to cut them a little bit of dry grass. 
fill up their water tanks uh, and bring a coffee back for Toon. After that, I think we've got about half an hour more. We'll probably run out of wire. Toon will go and get some more and I'll let the big goats out onto pasture and just make sure they don't get through here until this is all, all finished with the wire. So it's, it's going quite well, which is good because it's quite a boring job. It's not many tasks on the on the farm that feel like a proper job, but this and installing irrigation. I should be fishing, shouldn't I? Okay, oi, 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 oi. Mau mai. Fucking cut. You're dangerous. Thought I'd just pop back to the house. Uh, managed to impale myself on a bit of eucalyptus where one of the branches had been sticking out from before. And uh, yeah, it's not good when you see it sticking out the other side of your thumb, but we'll survive. All in all, very happy how it's been going for such a big job in uh, these sorts of conditions. Looks good on a postcard, but working out in it, it's hard. It's nice where Toon is now. We've got some coconut trees overhanging, so there's a little bit of shade there. Whew. Cut all our old eucalyptus from uh, outside of our boundary. <laughs> So we'd planted them in the wrong place up here and uh, yeah we've got about 20 or so uh, small to medium size eucalyptus which is fine so they had to come out anyway there's one a little bit bigger here uh, we've got that earmarked for something else coming up yet to be revealed got some others put these in about a year ago so they're doing well not as big as the ones that are at the far end of the farm but They'll all get used or sold eventually. Building projects, eucalyptus is our go-to. It doesn't last very long unless it's treated and kept out of the elements. If you stick it in the soil and uh, it gets wet, even the big ones, they'll, they'll just snap off at ground level. So uh, if, you, if you treat them with termite killer, put them into concrete, stop them getting wet, they'll last a long, long time. Not very good for for posts, for fences, uh, but these aren't actually used as uh, supports for the, you know, as, as posts rather. So uh, yeah, there's no fear of them snapping off at the bottom. Um, we use these at our secret pond right at the far end of the, the farm. And uh, the, we put them in about five years ago and they're still there holding the barbed wire. Um, you know space nicely in between so uh, yeah they're, they're good for this sort of thing you know to get four or five years out of that we're, which are for a bit of free timber i don't mind replacing that every four or five years uh, gang's feeling the heat look missus is nearly here pepsi time oh romantic isn't it eh so mad Cheers. Not too much. Cheeky. Three long days. Well, two long days today, about two thirds of a day. It's been a grueler, absolute grueler. But it's done, and uh, I'm not saying we can relax 100%, but. Even the great Houdini goat herself, aka Sherbet, came and checked out the fence, didn't even attempt it. So she's probably clocked with a highly intelligent brain that uh, it's the same as the other pasture fencing and there's to be no escape. We've got a couple of little tweaks to do on some old bits and then that's it. We're going to put our feet up for at least two days, which is the first time in a long time that we've been able to do that. So all that remains for me to say is thank you very much for those of you that help us to make this sort of project possible. Uh, you're making a, a big difference to our lives. Thanks a lot guys and uh, take care. It's a lot bit for me. 
When my husband leave me work alone. Yeah, but look at that. I've had to put iodine on it. Ah! Baby. Can you uh, suck the poison out for me? Mm.